bless your heart. Some kind of way you done found yourself for the online tutoring of Mr. Whittington's. Is it Mr. or Mr.? Mr. Whit? How that man say that? <laughs> anyway, today's episode is on factory. Now, I don't know what in the Sam here any of this means, but I hope you enjoy yourself. So get your ink pen and your pencil and get ready to learn about factory. Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring and today's tutorial is going to be about difference of cubes, factoring a difference of cubes. Let's check it out. Alright, so what we have before us today for the difference of cubes is the actual factoring pattern, the format of it. So anytime you have something cubed minus something cubed, that's called the difference of cubes. Mm -hmm. So the factoring pattern for that is a minus b times the first term squared, a squared, plus the product of these two terms, plus b squared. Mm -hmm. For example, let's say that I have the following. I have x cubed minus 8. What's being cubed is the variable x minus 2, which is being cubed, because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. All right, and in fact, ladies and gentlemen, I strongly encourage you to memorize your perfect cubes at least from one cubed all the way up to ten cubed. Know what those perfect cubes are because a lot of this is about recognition. All right, so knowing that you're dealing with a perfect cube is where it begins. From there, using the factoring pattern here, I'll be plugging in x minus 2, and then our formula tells us to square that first term within the parentheses. So I have x squared plus the product of these two terms, so that's going to be 2x plus the number 2 squared, which is 4. And there you have it. By the way, this trinomial will always look as though it's a perfect square trinomial, but it's not. It will always be prime, aka not factorable. So there's no need for you to attempt to factor this anytime, okay? Because it's going to be prime. Now, in future classes, you may be in a situation where you need to find the complex solution of this and then continue to factor this. But when you're using real numbers, all right, can't factor that. So there you go. You can just stop right there. So in other words, that's the solution, ladies and gentlemen. All right. So I'm going to put a nice red box around it. And what I'm going to do from there is show you some more examples because that's what you're here for, right? So here we have problem number one. And notice, ladies and gentlemen, that I already have my formula here. So I would strongly suggest that every time you use the formula in any mathematics problem, any algebra problem, any calculus problem, any class that you have that's dealing with mathematics, go ahead and write down that formula every time you use it because that helps you memorize it and it gets you comfortable knowing when to use that particular formula so write it down every time you use it okay so let's first of all start by showing what's being cubed here so I can show that it's our M variable that's being cubed in that first term minus 4 that's being cubed in the second term so m to the third power is m cubed and 4 to the third power is 64. Using your factorization pattern here, you'll end up with m minus 4 times your first term squared, which is m squared, plus the product of these two terms. So 4 times m is 4m plus 4 squared, which is 16. All right, and that's the answer, ladies and gentlemen. That's it. Okay, it's boxing it up time. There you go. Red boxing it. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, your trinomial is prime. It can be factored. So, don't try. Unless you're going to deal with complex solutions. So, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Let's continue on. Here we have problem number two. We have 125x cubed minus 27. Once again, got my formula waiting on me right there. You see that? You see that? For the difference of cubes. And so here, I'm going to show that it's actually 5x that's being cubed in that first term minus 3 that's being cubed. So in other words, my a value from the formula is 5x, whereas my b value from the formula is 3. Then plugging it into our solution, we have 5x minus 3 times 5x squared, which is going to be 25x squared, plus the product of these two terms, which is going to be 15x, plus 3 squared, which is 9. All right, and as promised, this trinomial is prime. It cannot be factored. So that's it. Yep. Just getting things done today, ladies and gentlemen. Knocking these problems out. Let's move on to problem number three. We have the quantity of y plus 6 raised to the third power minus 216. Mm -hmm. So here we have a quantity involved. 
Yep. So what I'll do, ladies and gentlemen, is I'll go ahead and show us that the first term being cubed is y plus 6, and the second term being cubed is going to be the number 6 itself. Because 6 cubed is 216, ladies and gentlemen. Now plug it into our factoring pattern. Oh, and just in case you thought I was cheating here, there it is. There's the formula just right there, okay? So as I said before, write it down every time you use it. Okay, so continuing on, we'll start with using brackets here so we can bring some clarity to the problem. We'll have the quantity of y plus 6 minus 6, all right? And then we'll multiply that times the first term squared. So I have it as y plus 6 squared plus the product of these two terms. So that's 6 times y plus 6 plus our last term squared. That's 6 squared. Well, that gives me 36. All right. And this is what I have thus far, just like that. Okay. So what happens now is that notice that 6 minus 6 is just 0. So we'll just be left with y. So I'll just bring down the y right here, okay? And then, within the second set of brackets, I'm going to show that I'm going to expand that binomial squared. So I'm going to rewrite it as y plus 6 times y plus 6 plus 6 times y plus 6 plus 36. A lot of 6's in this problem. All right, so continuing on, we'll have y times, going ahead and multiplying this out, you'll have y squared plus 6y, and I'm just distributing, aka folding it out, and then 6 times 6 is 36. We'll distribute this 6 here, got my arrows popping. This gives me 6y plus 36 plus 36. All right, so that's what we have thus far, ladies and gentlemen. From here, I want to combine my like terms within the parentheses. So once again, bringing down that y variable, I'll end up with y squared plus, we have 6y plus 6y plus 6y, that gives me 18y. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be plus 36 plus 36 plus 36, well, that's going to give me 108. All right. Remember, in most cases, your trinomial here will not be factored, and this is an exact situation just like that, being as though there aren't two factors of 108 that will add to give me 18. And that's the answer, ladies and gentlemen. Done and done. Okay, so I'm going to put a red box around this. That's what I'm going to do. Put a box around that because we're going to move on to problem number four. Okay, so checking out problem number four, we have the following. We have 64a cubed minus 27b to the 6th power. And I wanted to show you that not in every problem will you have the exponents on the variables being exactly 3. In fact, they can be any multiple of 3 and it still be a perfect cube. So, in showing what's being cubed here, this first term is actually 4a that's being cubed. And then the second term, you'll have 3b squared that's being cubed. All right, because 3 to the third power is 27, and b squared cubed is 6 because you would multiply those exponents in that situation. So here we have that perfect setup of our a cubed minus b cubed format, and so we can apply that difference of cubes factoring pattern in order to solve it. So let's do just that. In my first set of parentheses, I'll have 4a minus 3b squared times the first term squared, which is 16a squared, multiplying 4a times 4a, plus the product of these two terms, which is going to be 12ab squared, plus the 3b squared squared. So that gives me 9b to the fourth power. All right? And once again, this trinomial is prime, so you can't continue any further from here. So this is your answer. Yeah. Just like that. Where's my red box? Let's get that going here. Let's get that going. And there it is. There it is. That's problem number four, ladies and gentlemen. Mm-hmm. Just like that. Let's move on. I got some more to show you. Problem number five. In problem number five, I have m to the ninth power, n to the twelfth power, minus 343. Okay? And once again, yeah, there's a formula right there. Okay? Keep writing it. So then I'll go ahead and show that what's being cubed is m cubed n to the fourth power. And in our second term, what's being cubed is the number 7. 
okay? So I'll be treating this m cubed into the fourth power as my a value in my factoring pattern, and I'll be treating the number seven as my b value. So plugging these things in, I end up with m cubed n to the fourth power minus seven times the first term squared will give me m to the sixth power n to the eighth power plus the product of these two, which is gonna be seven m cubed n to the fourth power plus seven squared, which is 49. All right, and this is the answer right here. Done and done, ladies and gentlemen. Just like that. Mm -hmm. That was problem number five. All right, so moving on to the next problem. Problem number six. All right, I wanna change to black here. That's right, getting that black pen ready for you. Oh, you were wondering again? Mm-hmm. There it is. Write it down every time. So here, problem number six, we have the following, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to show that it's actually 2x minus 3 that's being cubed minus 1 that's being cubed. All right, from here, we can go ahead and use brackets, and I'll show that I have the quantity of 2x minus 3 minus 1 times the quantity of 2x minus 3 squared plus the product of these two, which is still going to just be 2x minus 3, plus 1 squared, which is 1. All right, so it looks like that initially. From here, I'll go ahead and combine my like terms within that first set of brackets. So I'll be bringing down 2x and negative 3 and negative 1 combined to give me negative 4. In the second set of brackets, I'll be expanding that binomial squared. So I'll have 2x minus 3 times 2x minus 3 plus, I'm gonna go ahead and drop these parentheses here because only one is multiplying times it. So this would be 2x minus three, all right, plus one, and that's that for now. Next, I'll be multiplying the binomials inside of the brackets. So I'll end up with 4x squared minus 6x minus 6x plus nine, and then I'll bring down this plus 2x minus three plus one all within the brackets there, okay? Then after I've done that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna combine my like terms within the brackets. So bringing down this 2x minus four times the quantity of four x squared, combining my x to the first power terms, I have negative six x, negative six x, and positive two x. That gives me a negative 10 x. And then combining nine minus three plus one, that gives me seven. All right, so now, ladies and gentlemen, we have the quantity of 2x minus 4 times 4x squared minus 10x plus 7, and you can see if you can factor that trinomial, but as I told you before, your trinomial within it will most likely be prime, so you can go ahead and try it in this case since we had to use substitution, though, so that's very wise to do. Looking at 4x squared minus 10x plus 7, there aren't two values that'll multiply to give us the master product of 28 that will also add to 10, all right? So that won't happen. And the next thing we'll need to do is factor out this too. Remember when you're factoring completely, you don't wanna leave any quantities that have things in common. So all your terms inside of a set of parentheses or brackets should not have anything in common. If you notice this binomial 2x minus four, you have two in common. So I'll factor out a two. So factoring out that two, I end up with two times x minus two times the quantity of four x squared minus 10x plus seven, and, and this is my answer. I'll go ahead and box that up in red as I like to do. And that's our answer for number six, and that wraps up this session of Difference of Cubes. So once again, this is Larry Whittington, Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring. Please rate, comment, and subscribe, and if you're able, please donate. Also, if you haven't already, go ahead and click that subscribe button, ladies and gentlemen. Go ahead and subscribe. Peace. F-A-C-T-O-R-I-N-G. This include topics such as GCF, that's the greatest common factor, like Obama. The difference of squares. Quadratic trichinomiasis. Oh Lord, that's when the pig is sick on all four sides. The sum of cubes. That sounds like one of them games they play. Difference of cubes. Oh, that's just ignorant. AC method, yes honey, because you got to have your air conditioning in Texas. And factoring by grouping. 